Good evening, good evening. Welcome to Kingdom Advancement. I am Apostle Sonia Chambers, and we just welcome you to come on in, come in worshiping, come in praising, come in giving God honor, giving Him glory, giving Him praise. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Good evening. Come on in. Let's worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. Hallelujah to the King. Lord, we give you honor, we give you glory, we give you praise. There is none like you, O God, in all the earth. You are worthy, you are mighty, you are majestic in all your ways. You are king, you are master, you are Adonai, El Shaddai, the Holy One. There is none like you, O God. Tonight we want to joke, God. We want to be shifted. We want you to shake us, to mold us, and make us into all that we are called to be. Father, we want to step in to your purpose and your plan for our lives in Jesus' name. Hallelujah to the King. So good evening, everyone. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Kingdom Advancement is one hour later tonight. And that's just for tonight. But we're going to stay flexible, okay? Because we are the church. Uh, I had an event that I needed to be at with my daughter. And so instead of just saying we're not having it, we can adjust it. And that's the beauty of being an online um, teaching is because we can make those adjustments and you watch it at your leisure. Amen. Because we are the church and we can go to church when you're online. You can go to church anytime. I can broadcast this at 9 p.m. and you can get on at 9 a.m. in the morning. The goal is to get the word and we don't have to chase the word. Amen. So I know some of you love to be on live and we love to have you on live and that is truly a blessing, but we want to get people to a place. Like, that's even the joke tonight. We want you to get to a place where you can get flexible, that you're not rigid, that you're not stuck, that you're not anxious, that you're not worried. Tonight we're talking about joke. So this word joke and uh, it was a, uh, this jolt is a series which I was not uh, aware that that's what was uh, um, being formulated when last week when I taught about jumper cables. And I hope that some of you all took the, the three days that you needed to really see what God was saying to you. So this word jolt, which is J-O-L-T, is a verb and it means to push or to shake someone or something abruptly or roughly. It's a surge, uh, another like a statement, it says a surge a push, a thrust, a jar, a bump. And tonight we're going to, there's a thrust that is going to be pushed in the spirit. There's a put a jump that we're going to need. There's a bang. There's a jostle. There's a shake that we need to do to ourselves to just move into that next level in Jesus name. What is going to shake you? What is going to make you jolt? What is going to make, what is going to make you make impact in someone else's life? I'm just asking a question tonight. We're talking about being jolted. So our scripture tonight is Matthew chapter six and it's verses 25 to 34. And it's coming from the Amplified. And those of you that have your Bibles, this is really something that I would encourage you to highlight because we're in a season where we're coming out of some things and things are opening up. But even in that, because sometimes when we are tied up, just like the, the people in Israel, when they're in bondages, when they're, when they're, uh, you know, in slavery, when they're enslaved, when they're, you know, you've been going through a, uh, something for a long time, you kind of forget when you're free. <laughs> so this morning we got to, I'm jolting you into freedom. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking against worry anxiety, disbelief, discouragement, disobedience, even now in the name of Jesus. Tonight, we're talking about a jolt in Jesus' name. We're going to move to that next level. We're going to move in stride with what Jesus is saying. We're not just going to be moved by uh, circumstances and happenstance, but we're going to move by what the Holy Spirit is saying in Jesus' name. So this scripture goes on and I'm reading in uh, the Amplified. It says, therefore, I tell you, Stop being worried or anxious. And in the Amplifiers, it says perpetually uneasy and distracted. And sometimes we get so distracted. We're just so worried. We're just so concerned. You know, every little thing takes us off our game. Um, my, my apostolic covering, uh, Apostle Lejeune and Prophetess Valora Cole, they've been teaching 
uh, this whole past month about being unshakable as a Christian. And, and I'm saying to you, what you worried about? What are you anxious? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? And if you know he's the master of everything, and if you know, you know, he orders your steps. And if you know that no good thing will he withhold from you because you're walking upright. And if you know that he's king, Lord, and master, we're talking about a joke tonight that we should be not worried or anxious for anything. He has the whole world in his hand. You don't think he knows every hair on your head. You don't think he's concerned about you. You don't think there's doors that are opening that no man can shut? So tonight I'm shutting down anxiety in the name of Jesus. I'm shutting down worry in the name of Jesus. I'm shutting down discouragement and despair in the name of Jesus. No weapon that is formed against you is going to prosper. It's already condemned. And it's not that weapons don't form. Hey, but the thing is, is that they don't prosper. There's no, there's no fruit to the, the weapon. So you just got to stand firm and know that Jesus is Lord, Master, and King over your life and over your things. Hallelujah to our King. It says, it says perpetually uneasy and distracted about your life. It says, therefore I tell you, I got to start all over because I need you to get this. It says, therefore I tell you, stop being worried or anxious about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body as to what you will wear. Hey, God, because this is the thing. We worry about it. We're worried about what is it that I'm going to wear? What is it that we're going to, and we're, you know, especially in America, we're a very food focused thing. I just came from a dinner, um, a fellowship with, um, some ladies. And the thing is we weren't really worried about what we were going to eat or drink. The, actually the waitress kept coming saying, are you ready to order? And we kept saying, Oh, just give us a few more minutes over and over because we wasn't worried about we, I, I'm trying to set a stage for you that, to let you know you have a provider, you have a healer, you have a deliverer, you have a comforter. You have, there's nothing to worry about. Tonight we're talking about Job because the thing is we're going to have to, um, I almost got to bump you to let you know that God is concerned about you and your situations. He's concerned about you and your life. But you got to turn it all over to him. And you just keep holding on to it. And this, tonight, you're going to release it. You're going to release your finances. Um, I have a book here, Prayers That Activate Blessings. And I'm encouraging you. Because sometimes, if you don't know what to say, then you need a book and you need to holler out and say it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah to our King. But one thing, we're going to have to be obedient. And I'm going to read some of those blessings after, after we talk about this scripture because I need to activate you. You need a jolt to know that God is in control of every area of your life, not just the pieces that you want to give him. He wants to, he wants you to surrender to him so that you don't have to worry. So you don't have to be uneasy. So you don't have to be distracted. And you got to be careful what you're saying because, uh, we're going into a season where we got to realign our mind to start confessing the word and speaking those good things over our lives and stop. Watch your mouth. That's a joke statement. Watch what you are saying. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And you'll be surprised what you shake with your mouth. You want something else in your heart, but with our mouth, we speak death on ourselves. We speak discouragement. We speak despair. And God is saying, I don't have any of that for you. So we got to be mindful. Amen. The scripture goes on to say, look at the birds of the ear. Now look at the birds. They, you know, I, I was uh, in uh, Santo Domingo and I, we were in downtown Santo Domingo in Dominican Republic. And I, uh, there were pigeons. There were pigeons everywhere. And there were uh, tourists that were visiting and they came not only with like some bread, I'm talking about a garbage bag full of bread. And I'm looking at this saying, this is so strange. And they, and it wasn't like they brought it on the plane with them and brought it in, but they went to a bakery and got this bread and we were trying to take pictures. And it was like, we were by the oldest cathedral cathedral in um, um, Santo Domingo. And, uh, we could barely take the picture because the, the tourists are throwing the bread and throwing the bread and birds are coming from left, right, son. I've never been surrounded by so many birds around my feet in my life. And um, 
Deacon is Daisy went with us. And I was like, what's up with these birds? But I, the, you know, people just feeding and feeding. And I said, look at that, that people that lived in Santo Domingo, people that were visiting Santo Domingo were concerned about the birds. And the birds were being fed. So what is it that you, the, the father that knows every hair on your head, he, the one that knew you before you was in your mother's womb, you don't think he's concerned about your situation, your plight, your condition? I speak healing now in the name of Jesus from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I'm speaking to minds tonight. I'm speaking to hearts to realign. I'm, I'm speaking to angina and chest pain even now to be eradicated in the name of Jesus. I'm speaking to ovaries even now in the name of Jesus for those who want children. Hey, God, in the name of Jesus, we're speaking to cancer tonight. And we're talking about jolting some things. We got to speak. We got to speak. We got to speak. And we got to declare the word of God over every situation. We jump off too quickly. We, de we declare for a minute and then we go back into, oh, I don't know if God's going to know. God has already done. He's already at rest. He's already done everything that he needs to do. He's waiting for us to open our mouth. Just like the widow who he, um, the prophet went to her house and he said, what do you have? She says, I have nothing except, and I'm saying, what is your except tonight? Because you're thinking that you have nothing. And I'm saying with God, you have everything. You have his word. You have his power. You've accepted Jesus Christ as, uh, as Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit is living deep inside of you. What is stopping you? Open your mouth. Let's speak the word. Let's stand in faith. Let's eradicate doubt, despair, discouragement, unbelief in the name of Jesus. You got to believe. Hallelujah. It says they neither sow seed nor reap the harvest nor gather the crops into barns. And yet your heavenly father keeps feeding them. So he, you don't think he's feeding you? Uh, today we were, were driving through Rochester and I, I saw a man. He was standing by the highway and I couldn't even read his, he had a cardboard sign, but it was so um, lightly written. You could not really, you couldn't read what it says, but you know, he was uh, in need. Is that you? Are you standing on the highway uh, looking for food or just someone to hand you a Gatorade or water or a hot coffee as cars are going by? And sometimes we have to, uh, the joke tonight too, is to be more thankful for what we have versus what we don't have. The enemy has a way of, 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 of magnifying the 2% things that are wrong with you. And the 98% that's going well, you're not paying attention to. We could spend a whole lifetime trying to fix external things, the weight, the hair, you know, our, our, you know, our arms. You know, we're strengthening our legs. We're, we're doing all this exterior. And I'm saying to you tonight, the jolt is to clean up the interior. You're going to have to jump into this new thing. You're going to step back into the word and start studying the word, reading the word, um, confessing the word of your life and, and, and um, get rid of the distractions in Jesus name. The scripture goes on to say, the, um, are you not worth more than they? And what is your worth? Because sometimes... You know, we're talking about Joe tonight. This is the, this this teaching is to to impact you in such a way that you know that you are worthy, that you know that you are more than enough, that you know that you are greater, that you know that you serve a king and a master, and you are shaped in his image and his likeness. And no good thing will he withhold from you. But I'm saying to you. Are you not worthy? And I'm saying to you tonight, you are worthy. There are gems inside of you. There are gifts inside of you. And those of you that don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you still have those gifts and those gems, but it's now time to surrender your life over to Jesus Christ. Surrender your heart and your mind. Make him first in your life so we can activate those gifts so, so you can bring him honor and glory and praise. But it's a decision that you got to make. We're talking about Joe tonight. It's time to make some impact. It's time to be shaken. It, we, you know, uh, as I said, they talked about being unshakable. But the thing we want to shake up inside of you is the gifts, the callings, the teachings, the books. Hallelujah. The stores, the businesses, the education. We want to stir up those gifts inside of you. 
You are not what people are talking about. You are who image and, and likeness you were made in. You were created for worship. You were created to be creative. So I'm saying to you tonight, are you not worthy? Don't let people tell you you're not worthy. Don't let people speak down. We got to stir up the gifts. This is the joke. We got to stir it up in Jesus name. It says here, and I'm going to end here because I want to confess some, uh, give you some confessions and I'm encouraging you. There are, there's going to be several books that I'm going to, uh, you know, on my lives that I'll, I'll encourage you to, to, to purchase because it's time to, you know, because sometimes you don't know what to confess and sometimes you just have your Bible and so forth. But I'm saying we want this, this book says prayers that activate blessings, not curses, blessings. You're blessed going in, you're blessed going out. You're blessed in the city, you're blessed in the field. You're blessed down south, you're blessed up, up north. You're blessed on the west and you're blessed in the east. You're, you're blessed overseas in Jesus' name. You're blessed locally, globally, internationally. You're blessed. But you got to receive that tonight in Jesus' name. The last portion of this says, and why are you worried about clothes? See how the lilies and wildflowers of the field grow? They do not labor, nor do they spin wool to make clothing. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory and splendor dressed himself like one of these. And a lot of times we, we, we focus on those things, you know. We focus on the exterior. We focus on the, you know, the clothing, the shoes, and the so forth. But I'm saying to you, it's saying that the wildflowers, they didn't even worry about. They didn't pay anything. And sometimes the very thing that God want to give you, you spending money on. Sometimes you got to wait so you can allow him to do what he wants to do, the way he wants to do it. And a lot of times he'll give it to you free of charge. But because we get anxious. Because you get worried and you think you're going to be left out or you're going to think that something's forgotten or do they remember me or does God remember me? We jump into it and we go and take uh, initiative to do it ourselves. And God said, I was going to take care of that in another day. So sometimes you got to wait. So even the joke tonight is wait. Don't be so quick. Don't make quick decisions. Don't just rush into anything. Slow down. Allow God to work. Give him a chance. In Jesus name. Um, I think that's it. Because. You know. It's time to. Make an impact. It's time to get a breakthrough. It's time. And actually. Everything's already broken through. Tomorrow's going to be Palm Sunday. Everybody's going to remember that. Next week is going to be resurrection. Easter. Whatever. You know. Jesus is. Alive and well, sitting on the right hand of the Father, interceding for you. You don't even have to pray like that. But you got to believe. You got to trust. You got to know. You got to spend time. So that when he... Okay, let's, let's think about it. Jesus is praying, interceding for you. Answers are coming down from angels you can't hear because you're on TV. You can't hear because you're distracted. You can't hear because you're worried. You can't hear because you're anxious. So how do we stop those things? Because these things befall all of us. So I'm not talking like, you know, any of us are exempt from that. But if we are to step into the new, step into the new thing that he has for us, to be catapulted into the new purpose and the plan and shut down some of the voices, some of the, the naysayers, you're going to have to spend more time with the word. So I wanted to... Um, Just say some confessions tonight uh, for you to just remember his goodness, you know, and just remember his goodness. And I'm going to give, I'm going to say about maybe, I'm going to say seven because seven is complete. Let's, let's do seven of them. But as I say these confessions, I want you to receive it for you, your family, your friends, your community your city, your state, your country, and globally. Receive it in Jesus' name. And these prayers these prayers that we're um, going to be sharing tonight says, prayers for the blessing of goodness. It says, I receive your blessings of goodness 
and you set a crown of pure gold on my head. That's Psalm 21, 3. So receive your crown tonight in Jesus' name. And it's not even a silver crown, it's gold. The next one says, I will rejoice because of your goodness. Exodus 18, 9. Rejoice about the goodness of the Lord. This is not time to be depressed and despondent. Remember him. There's joy in the Lord. There's joy in salvation in Jesus' name. The next says, let your goodness pass before me. Hallelujah. Exodus 33 and 19. Expect goodness to pass before you. Expect increase to pass before you. Expect love to pass before you. Expect encouragement to pass before you. Expect God's goodness to be in you, for you to be encapsulated by his love and goodness in Jesus' name. The next says, let your abundant goodness come into my life. We thank you, God, for the abundance that's coming into each and every life. That's Exodus 34, 6. Expect abundance. And not just abundance in finance, abundance in, in joy, abundance in peace, abundance in health, abundance in love, abundance in prosperity. And hallelujah. Abundance. In your life in Jesus name. It says let the next says let your promise of goodness be fulfilled in my life. Second Samuel 7 28. There are promises that are sealed in heaven for us. And they're, they're, they're for good. And to prosper and have that we have good success. So receive every promise. Everybody's um, desires are different. But receive the promise of God tonight in Jesus name. To put it back on the table. Put it back on the altar and tell the Lord, I'm looking at you. I want you, I, I know you're good to me and I know you're going to be good to my kids. And I know you're going to be good to the generation after generation after gen. Start speaking into the future. So I said that's one, two, three, four, five. Here goes six is let me be glad and joyful because of your goodness. First Kings 8, 66. There's a gladness when you serve the Lord. There's a joy when you serve the Lord. There's a peace when you serve the Lord. Tap into that. Tonight we're talking about joy, Joe, because we want to jumpstart some things. And these things that we're looking for, the only thing that can jolt us, the only thing that can jump us, the only thing that can shake us is the word of God. And guess what? When we speak this word, even demons tremble. But sometimes we stay so silent. We, we, we're solemn in the pain and, and it's we're going to have to speak up. And we're going to have to step out by faith and, and set an atmosphere that shuts down the voice of the enemy in Jesus' name. And the last one I'm going to um, uh, read tonight is, I will rejoice in your goodness. 2 Chronicles 6, 41. There's some good things that God has in store. And I'm expecting testimony after testimony from each and every one of you. It's time to get jolted. I have to push tonight. We have to thrust tonight, but it's the word of God. There's nothing in, listen, his word doesn't come back void. The only reason why it's void, because we're not speaking. The only reason why we're not seeing things, because we're spending too much. Sometimes we spend a lot of time creating and studying it instead of speaking it out. And it says faith comes by hearing. Sometimes you're going to have to listen to the word and then speak it out. Because sometimes we're not even, we're, we read it, but we're not hearing. We're not meditating on this word. So it's getting in our spirit so we can get the, uh, I would say the fortitude to stand when, when, when oppression and different things come against us. But this is open door season. Big doors, wide doors are open. Windows are open. Portals are open. This is the joke tonight. He's thrusting us into our destiny. And you just want, tonight I'm just saying, step in. Because we serve a good God. So, you know, I got excited, y'all. Because he's good. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that we don't have challenges and adversities. I'm not saying that, but he gave us the word. He gave us something con to confess. And even if we don't, you know, you're not um, confessing like you should just get back to it. Start speaking the word in your home, speaking it over your children, speaking it over your bank accounts, speaking it over your spouses, speaking it over your, in your, uh, you know, in your houses, speaking it in your apartments, start speaking, speaking, speaking. And you'll see if you start to speak, hallelujah. You're going to see your whole atmosphere change. And don't pull back off the plow. Don't pull back. 
Just keep moving forward knowing that God is for you. And if he is for you, who can be against you? Because at, uh, at the name of Jesus, every knee got to bow and every tongue got to confess that he is Lord. And if you already know that he is Lord, what are you anxious about? What are we worrying about? What are we thinking about? When our eyes close, whatever age we are, it's over. Jesus has come. So it has nothing to do, you know, sometimes people, you know, you're waiting on the rapture. No, when your eyes close, Jesus has come and you want to hear well done, not done. You want well done. So it's time to be jolted into our purpose, to move into who we're called to be, to start equipping the saints, to finding the gifts and callings, to shut down the voice of the enemy. And, 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 and stop allowing others to, to, to follow the voice of a stranger. And a lot of times, because they, these, they hear these other voices and they're not hearing your voice because we're not, you know, we're not speaking up as we sh should. Other people are getting confused and, and weary and thinking that God is not real. But tonight, the true jolting is that Jesus died. He, he rose on the third day. He's standing for you. He's standing for me. He's interceding on the right hand of the Father. He's not concerned about uh, 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 the enemy and what he's doing. We, we have um, um, power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. So he is giving us dominion and power. And we have to tap into that. So that's the joke tonight. You got to know who you are in Christ. You got to know you got dominion. You got power. You got to know that you are walking in goodness and no good thing is he going to withhold from you as you walk up right before him. So step into the new and not always look at the news. Step into the new. Start doing new disciplines. Start um, doing new confessions. Start spending time to listen. You don't always have to speak, but listen. And then after you get the, uh, you listen, take your instruction and then obediently, obediently follow it out. And I'm telling you, doors will open. They, or he's just waiting on us. So I pray this encourage you tonight. I know it's nine o'clock and it's late for some. Some might have been already taking their little Saturday night nap. But uh, I pray when you watch this, that you feel the Holy Spirit jolt that's inside of you, that he wants you to not only, he doesn't only want to impact your life, but he wants your life to be an impact to others. So God bless you all. I love you all. Um, we'll be back on uh, next Saturday. I am Apostle Sonia Chambers. I am the Apostolic Leader of Kingdom Advancement Alliance. And if you want to give to Kingdom Advancement Alliance, you can... Uh, so into at kaglobal.org. We are, um, a lot of our, our mission initiatives are on the ground locally and um, overseas. And we've been really sending finances over to uh, uh, Sri Lanka and India and uh, Uganda for, for um, um, feeding programs to assist for even Easter meals after um, church um um, on Sunday, right, on the 17th. So I encourage you to um, sow because be, you may not always be able to go, but you'll be able, you can sow. Uh, we do have a, a cash app. Um, I think it's dollar sign K-A-A-L-L-I-A-N-C-E for those who want to do um, give that way. But I'm encouraging you. Um, it's good ground. Uh, it's good ground to, to see that lives are being changed because we, you know, we stepped out, you know, by faith to, to care about others. And part of the jolting is in your wallet. <laughs> some of the things, some of the blessings that you're looking for is that because you, you want to receive, but you know, sometimes we don't give and you, you, you reap what you sow. So sometimes God is just looking for you to be concerned about his things so he can take care of your things. So I just love you all. God bless you all. Thank you for the 9 o'clock, 9 p.m. crew, Eastern Standard Time. Um, uh, it's time to make an impact. This jolt series, you know, we, we, we started off with jumper cables, and now 
we're into Jolt, and um, the, this series will continue out in, into April. And we just want to, um, you know, thank you all for just supporting us and, and, and encouraging us. And shout out to the Standard Bearer New York uh, team. Uh, you know, they did a wonderful outreach uh, down in New York City, um, assisting adopted children and foster um, um, children as well at uh, that home. Um, so, uh, you know, we're just thankful that um, God has allowed us to, to be an act, impact to others' lives. And I pray that you will make an impact wherever you are. It's time to jolt, not bolt. We're not running away. We're moving into what we're called to be. So God bless you all. I love you all. And good night.